Hey guys, what's up? This is Don and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to get some extreme slow motion on your clips using Twixter. We are going to be learning a lot of cool new tricks and uh, I will show you how I managed to get my original 60 FPS footage down to just 1% of its original speed which uh, is equivalent to 6000 FPS. What you are watching right now is a short video which I created uh, quite a while ago and uh, as you can see I have this really cool slow motion shots and I managed to do all of this with a relatively low amount of uh, warping and distortion effects which are commonly a problem anytime Twixter is used. So I will show you the tricks and uh, techniques that I used to um, get the final effect. And uh, let's see if I can record this tutorial in one hit. Um, the amount of times I have attempted to do this and just ended up talking nonsense uh, you would not believe me if I told you. But uh, anyway, I think, uh, you know, whatever time lucky. This is late that time lucky, but we've we've gone way past that. Okay, uh, enough talking. Let's uh, get to it. So, what I have right here is one of the original shots. Uh, this is a 1280 by 720 clip. 59.94 or just 60 fps and i shot this with my canon 6d so this is one of the original shots and if i show you in the final thing it's this shot right here so it looks completely different now uh, we don't have a sky in the background or anything i just made all the shots look the same so we just had one guy in the center each time okay So, um, if you're watching this tutorial expecting some kind of magic bullet solution or maybe just a few settings with Twixter, then you're going to be very disappointed. Uh, the truth is, the final effect took a lot of work to pull off. And uh, the actual Twixter part is only at the very end of this tutorial. Uh, what makes up most of this effect is the preparation and uh, all of the sort of pre-work before you apply the effect uh, so that's what I'll be going through the most so how do we prepare our footage well first of all you should always uh, shoot uh, with uh, you know keep in mind that you want to apply Twixter to this so there are certain things which you can do to help Twixter do a better job of uh, slowing down your clip without any artifacts. So part of this uh, will come from understanding how Twixter actually works. And it works by basically tracking the movement of pixels between two frames and then it runs algorithms to generate intermediate frames between those two original frames and it will keep repeating that algorithm uh, until all of the intermediate frames are filled in and depending on how much you slow down your footage by that algorithm is run more and more and more times so a few things which will help you to get a better uh, end result the first thing is contrast the more contrast you have in your scene the better uh, with my shot here, I have a lot of nice contract. I've got both luminance con uh, contrast. Did I say contract? Uh, if I did, I'm sorry. But contrast, that's what I mean. Uh, but I have good luminance contrast. So I have dark, a dark silhouette figure against a bright background. But I also have color contrast. We have these browns and reds and oranges against some blue so it's all good over here but uh, for example on the shoe here it's kind of white against white so this could be 
an issue. Um, so, first thing is contrast. The second thing is sharpness. And there's two ways to ensure that your clip has the best sharpness possible. Uh, the first way is to make sure that you shoot with a very fast shutter speed uh, that will eliminate any motion blur. When I shot this, uh, I was shooting at 1 uh, in 4000 on my Canon 6D. Uh, you can probably get away with anything over 1 in 1000. Um, so just keep that in mind. The other way to get good sharpness is to use a small aperture. When we shot this, I believe we were either on f8 or f9, and on the particular lens that I was using, that aperture range, um, if I'm correct, was within the optimal range of that lens. Uh, certain lenses work better within a certain uh, range of apertures. So that probably varies from uh, lens to lens, but uh, it might be useful for you to know that information before you you attempt to shoot. So fast aperture, uh, sorry not fast aperture, small aperture and a very fast shutter speed will get you good sharpness. Now when you shoot with a small aperture and a fast shutter speed you'll be cutting out a lot of light. So it'll be crucial that you are in good light. I shot this on a bright sunny day, so light was not an issue. Okay, so now that you have all of those things in mind, those will generally help you to get a better result with Twixter. But uh, actually, with the techniques I'm going to be showing you, Sorry, I have just accidentally muted my microphone. I don't know what I was saying. I think I just started talking about uh, how the those three things, contrast, fast aperture, small, uh, small aperture, and fast shutter speed will give you a good result, uh, a good starting point to uh, then apply Twixter. Now, those things are great, and uh, they will help us out either way, but with the techniques I'm going to show you, you can actually sort of somewhat bypass uh, those things. Even if you don't have near perfect uh, footage, you can probably still get around it with the techniques I'm going to show you. But make your life easier and follow those guidelines anyway. Okay, enough talking. Let's actually see how we prepare this footage. So I actually only have 10 frames here. And these 10 frames are going to be stretched out to anything over 15 seconds or more. That's how good the techniques I'm about to show you are. Now, I was I spent a long time talking about contrast and all of that uh, jazzy stuff. Uh, but we actually won't apply Twixter just yet. What we're going to do is to go to the Roto brush, double click our clip, and we are basically going to cut out our guy. So I just trace around. We only want the guy, so let's uh, do that. The reason why we are rotoscoping the guy is this is the only way you are going to be able to get the result uh, that I showed you at the beginning of this video. Even if you have the most perfect clip uh, and you took into consideration all of those uh, points that I discussed at the beginning of this video, it will most likely still not be good enough. Unless maybe you shot this against a perfect background, so a single color background such as blue or green. Uh, but even then I'd be tempted to say you'd probably still not get uh, anywhere near uh, the preview you saw at the beginning of the video. So. We are going to rotoscope this entire thing, and uh, by the way, you can change the size of the brush. If you go to the brush tool and go to brushes, you can change the sizes here. I'm actually going to close this though, I've got limited space. And uh, with the roto brush, you just draw on the areas that you want. Oops, we jumped up by accident. Let's uh, jump back in. And uh, which mode do we want? Okay, here we go. 
Right, and uh, we're just going to keep drawing around and see what we can get. Oops, here we go. I was on the wrong tool for a second. And uh, the reason we're cutting this out is because we're going to lay it against a single colored background later. And that is going to give us maximum contrast. And only then can we then move on to apply a Twixter and uh, get the result that you saw at uh, the beginning of this video. This will all make sense as I go along. Uh, please be, please bear with me. This is turning out to be a very horrible tutorial, but I promise you, it'll be worth, it'll be worth it. If you make a selection accidentally, hold ALT and uh, just hover left left mouse over the areas that you don't want, and they will be deselected. So I will just finish this one frame. And I think this is pretty good over here. This leg is incomplete. Uh, let me close this. And I'm just going to undo that. This is being a pain in the ass, so I will just go ahead and uh, subtract that whole middle section. And I think we are getting pretty close. See, these areas, they have good color contrast, but in terms of luminance contrast, i.e. how bright these areas are, uh, this blue here and this red here is roughly the same luminance. So that's why this selection is uh, being a bit harder. So even if we're not using our sharpness and good contrast for Twixter directly, we are using it indirectly because it's helping us to get a good trace. And then later, of course, we'll end up with a better rotoscope, which will work a lot better with uh, Twixter. So that is the first frame finished. I will then just move on to the next frame. And the roto brush will do a pretty good job of following uh, the previous edges you selected. But you may still have to go in here and just fine tune it a little bit. So if I just go in here and grab all of this. Just uh, fine tune my selection. A little bit up here. Pretty good. I think we can move on to the next frame. So what I'm gonna do is to actually skip the video to when I have finished uh, rotoscoping and then we'll move on to the final steps. Okay, so quite a while later I have now finished uh, rotoscoping each of the 10 frames. Um, I probably did a pretty sloppy job but you know this is just for the sake of this tutorial. You can be more careful when you're working with something that's supposed to be, you know, like a final piece. But I think I did a pretty good uh, roto. If I just scrub through, you can see how it moves. Okay, um, maybe you can just fix this section here. Okay, we're good. Right. When you have uh, done rotoscoping each frame, what you want to do is hit the freeze um, button and this will cache and lock segmentation for roto brush which basically means it's going to actually perform the roto. Uh, before you do that you could maybe just flick through these different views to uh, see what your final roto is going to look like. Right, I'm going to hit freeze and it's going to go through all those different frames and there we go. If you want to refine this, you have to tick freeze again to unfreeze. Right. We are going to go back to our comp, and here we go. We now have our guy rotoed out. Looking pretty good. And uh, you'll also see that uh, 
we now have some a new effect applied onto our clip called Roto Brush. And uh, here you can change a few settings, uh, such as smoothing out the edges, a little feathering, and uh, choking it so that it's uh, you, you basically shrink uh, the Roto if you choke, shrink or expand it. Uh, I think I will maybe just uh, choke it slightly, maybe around uh, 10%. I don't want to do this too much. You don't want to lose too much edge detail. But uh, this looks pretty good. And uh, you can smooth it out more or less, and you can also feather it out. And I'm also pretty happy with how the feather looks. And uh, when we are done, we are going to go create a new solid. Let's uh, make this green screen green. So something like this. And hit OK. And OK. And put this solid behind our comp. And what I'm going to do is to add this to the render queue. Set the output module to lossless, QuickTime format. Uh, post render action, we are going to import this and the format options I will choose an uncompressed 8-bit uh, 422. Hit OK and hit OK and let's just call this um, jump green screen. I'm going to hit render. It's going to do it pretty quickly and because we chose that uh, post render action to uh, import the clip you can see it in our project already but if you don't have it you can find where you rendered it out to and drag it back in here we'll uh, now drag this to a new comp let's uh, rename this to jump one main i'll hit ok and uh, we need to first of all increase the length of this comp so let's go for uh, say 20 seconds and uh, well I probably just skipped this completely when I should have addressed it but the reason why we put a green solid in the background is because this will give us maximum contrast and nice edges and Twixter is going to have a field day with this clip. This is going to work perfectly for what we need. So, what I will do is apply Twixter. So, effect, uh, revision plugins, Twixter Pro. And I will set the speed to just 1%. And uh, we only have 10 frames, we need to stretch this out. So, if I go to time, I can enable time remapping and I can just stretch this out to about here and if I were to do a run preview of this you can see what is now happening Twixter has been applied this is moving at 1% speed and as you can see it is extremely slow and uh, you know already this is not a horrible result well it is a horrible result but better than anything you could ever get with uh, just a raw footage. So let's go ahead and fix uh, as many of these issues as we can. We've got some warping and distortion and ghosting. So let's go and fix this. The first thing uh, that will remove a lot of the ghosting is the input frame rate. We need to match this to our clip. Our clip is 59.94 FPS. So let's match that and you will see that a lot of that uh, ghosting disappeared. Uh, we are also going to change the uh, motion vectors uh, to best, which uh, is already the default option. Let's add an image prep and uh, take contrast and edge enhance. This uh, may improve uh, the final look just a little bit uh, because it will run a few extra algorithms before it applies the effect. Um, the frame interpolation will uh, put blend and the warping will use uh, inverse with smart blend. Okay, uh, as far as Twixter settings go, that is it. That is all you need to do. 
let's uh, hit play and see what um, what this looks like. So you know, as I said at the beginning of the tutorial, the actual Twixter part is not that much. Uh, it's not that hard. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's preparing the footage that will make the most difference to your final result. So as we're doing the RAM preview, you can see we've got minimal uh, warping and distortion effects, and uh, this is exactly the same speed that we had initially and I'm pretty happy with this result actually okay uh, let's leave it at six seconds for now and this is the result I can still see some um, pretty weird distortion uh, along the arm there and um, this is because of our current frame blending mode we don't have any if we right click we can go to frame blending and we need to set this to pixel motion and this is going to improve uh, a lot of that uh, warping that's inside uh, the actual figure the edges are okay but uh, the inside is still moving pretty weirdly so uh, that should have fixed it uh, before I do a final render I am gonna create a new solid Let's make this one white and hit OK. Put this behind our clip. And let's key out this green. So if I go to Effect, I'm going to go to Keying and then Key Light 1.2. And the screen color will just pick the green. And because this is a perfect solid that we added before, all of the green is just going to disappear. I'm going to create a new solid. Let's make it black. And let's uh, go to the ellipse tool, double click to add uh, a mask, subtract, and then feather it out. Press T to bring up the opacity and uh, maybe lower it to about 30 or so percent. And uh, this white solid, maybe I'll uh, not make it as white, just make it a little bit gray and uh, that looks pretty cool to me and uh, I'm gonna do a final render and then we'll just talk about some uh, other things that you may have to do to make sure that you get the best possible result okay so this is the final result uh, I think I'm pretty happy with it uh, probably not as good as uh, the original that I did before but of course I spent a lot more time on that one so, you know, it's up to you how far you want to take this. Hopefully what I showed you should uh, serve as a good starting point. And uh, it's going to take a lot of experimentation. And you may have to do this a few times before you um, finally, you know, get that look. Uh, the truth is there is no shortcut. And it's going to take some time to get used to. But um, what I actually did in my final... Uh, piece. If you look here, there is still some uh, warping and distortion, especially when uh, his knee kind of starts to intersect with his other leg here. If you look, you can see a little bit of uh, warping there. And this happens again as his arm starts to intersect with his leg. So that's another tip try and avoid those sections because they will cause you a lot of problems. If you look in my original animation, uh, you will see that uh, on all the shots I tried as much as possible to avoid uh, body parts intersecting because I knew those were hot spots for errors and um, warping and distortion. So for example on this shot there is no intersections. Here there is and uh, it's pretty much exactly the same as we're getting in our the example we just did with the tutorial but you will notice that I cut it uh, as soon as this starts to happen and uh, I cut you know as this arm is perfectly out here and then later in the you know in the in the whole video you see at the end here I sort of resume it when his arm is already sort of finished going past the leg so you just have to be clever about how you cut your footage 
after this and uh, how it's going to look in the end. But uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned something new and I will see you in the next one. Bye.